So we did MadeSafe as a company, MadeSafe as an internet, um, MadeSafe as a possible income. So you know, you guys are out there making apps and um, you're thinking about how to monetize it. It's really complicated these days. You have to go out to companies and get advertising contracts, and um, there's a lot of steps involved in monetizing your app. Um, that's where open source developers have a hard time. So on the Safe Network, um, it tracks your gig requests. Like if you make, you just make an app and it's on the Safe Network, and the amount of people who are using it generates automatic safe coin revenue for your app. Um, so you make your application, whatever it is, a calculator, um, and then you would enter in your safe coin address, um, which looks a lot like a Bitcoin address, and then you're earning money. You make your app, you put it on, and you're making money. You don't have to go through lawyers or advertising companies. It's um, super peer-to-peer, -peer, super next-gen, um, based on utility. Yeah, so it's a great way for open source or any type of technology company to have automatic revenue built in. And then, if you're not a programmer um, and you just want to contribute to the network, make it stronger, um, like I said, you have the data on your, you can rent out your extra memory that you're not using for income to the network. Um, and that's what keeps it spreading, keeps it going, keeps it fast, is having all the nodes everywhere. Um, and there's a lot you can read on about that. Um, and I'm just gonna touch on this. This is probably how you guys heard of us, but um, right now it's a Bitcoin sphere type of project. Um, so, of course you can buy safe coins um, with Bitcoin on different exchanges. Um, just going to touch on this, but there's a few features that make it different from all the other crypto projects out there. Um, it doesn't have a blockchain, which means it can scale a lot faster, a lot quicker. You won't have these 100 gigabyte nodes everywhere. It breaks everything down in manageable chunks. Um, so basically, there's a lot of reasons why it's faster, cheaper, and more secure than something like Bitcoin. Um, and of course, if it launches and everything goes according to the plan, then right now it's 35 cents, and if it passed Bitcoin, that would be the value, um, which is pretty crazy, but there's potential. Um, and also, I don't know how much you guys know about just how money works, fiat currency works with the Federal Reserve banks and things like that, but um, there's something called inflation, and the good thing about Bitcoin and Safecoin is it's not subject to those types of manipulation or control, um, which is why people are really looking at these for the future. And Bitcoin just broke its all-time high at 3,500 um, really recently, because there's a certain amount and it never gets higher, so it doesn't have inflation that decreases the value, um, which is like, in one second, that's kind of the big deal behind Bitcoin, is it's not manipulated like that. And Safe Point has that too. Um, so we did Made Safe as a company, as an internet, as an income, as an investment. And this is the part that really gets me excited is Safe Network as a revolution. Because um, I lived in a lot of places growing up, like Africa, and um, I travel a lot. And it's just, it's really kind of horrible what's going on with government control, corruption, all these systems. Um, and Safe Network kind of equalizes everything. You can't take it over, you can't manipulate it. Um, and it finally gives people like something they can, you know, calculate against and like use fairly. Um, so it really has some world changing potential, not just about making money, it's about like making the world kind of make sense. Um, so, like we've touched on this, uh, it's a big thing is it combats dishonest financial systems. Um, I've said a lot of this, but there's no inflation, there's no one controlling it, there's no big bailouts like you see in the news where trillions of dollars get flushed away. But um, And if anybody reads about basic income or income inequality, disparity due to technology, um, this is something that really combats that because anyone has access to a computer. More and more kids 
even in Africa are getting um, smartphones for like $20. Costs are coming down and more people get access. And then they can just jump right on safe and farm out their hard drive and make money. So it really creates a more sustainable, healthy, you know, egalitarian, equal economic system for the world um, that has never existed yet. And with the online economy, um, yeah, this is a big topic because right now you have to go online, you want to see something, a book, a video, a movie, Netflix, you have to pay for it. And that's the current system. But on something like the Safe Network, I mean, one person could buy something and put it on there anonymously for everybody. So it forces this new kind of economic model for the world where, like, I mean, digital content is easy to copy. This makes it super easy to copy. So the new type of economic model is something where, like, um, donation-based economy, where you know you see someone working on something and you support them. So you actually support them. You can do microtransaction donations, or um, like you know just support them with the decentralized currency. So it's super empowering for the individual artist. It cuts out all these middlemen in the middle taking their cut and um yeah it's just kind of forces society to the next level um which is super exciting and so yeah um and then just in general changes the world everyone has access to information you know governments can't like stop you from looking at anything change, in a lot of countries that's a big problem not so much here but um so you know, the idea is, if you listen to some of these talks on YouTube, is it can cut down on hatred and war and some of these long, you know, problems that countries have had against each other because of propaganda. Um, so, and yeah, in the future could allow alternative forms of government, direct democracy, you submit bills on your own, people can upload or download like Reddit, and, um, don't need Congress, it's a new government. So um, anyway, I could go on forever um, about Safe Network and what it means for the world, but um, we're gonna do questions here and then uh, watch a few videos about making apps for it and JavaScript. And then we're gonna have a app competition where first place gets 100 bucks, second place gets 20, third place gets five. And, um, it's just making little apps for our safe network using our APIs, and then you can earn Bitcoin or made safe coin your choice. But um, yeah, so we're gonna do questions now, a couple of videos, talk about the contest, and that's what we're looking at. Any questions? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the things you said, I actually contribute to the blockchain, and uh, you said that you guys are using blockchain. Because our hard drives are nodes, or how does that work? Because I'm just asking, how, if you don't use the blockchain, how are all these different technologies that are possible? Well, you safe them. Okay. Um, basically, what I got from that is he was asking, like, why don't we use the blockchain? Um, blockchain exists; it enables a lot of this. So why don't we just use that? Um, it's a good question. There's a lot of projects that do. Um, in this space, it looks like we're one of the main ones that don't, and the reason is, I don't know if you've been following Bitcoin too closely, but it's been running into all these scaling issues. Um, it just had its fork because the scaling was getting so bad, it, like the block size was one megabyte. You can't fit a lot of transactions through that. It can't handle all the world's transactions. Um, so the blockchain design has a lot of limitations, and um, safe network is designed to scale to as many people who need it as quickly as they need it and just be super efficient. Break down that 100 gigabyte Bitcoin node and then into manageable chunks and then spread it across the world so it's a lot more efficient. Um, that's, the main, that's the main. So the alternative is to distribute on our hard drives, the nodes. The way it's really different because this is a whole new internet. Bitcoin is only a currency. Um, so blockchain works great for a currency. It just lists all the transactions. But this... Ethereum yeah, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I just wanted, I'm just really curious how you conquer all these, you know, things without actually being on the block. So, it's a system of distributed nodes, um, and they get consensus. He could probably speak more on this, but they get consensus through breaking everything into like groups of groups of nodes, um, and then the closest group of eight in X4 space. You can definitely read about it on the forums. I'm just like a JavaScript dev, but um, yeah. So it gets it breaks it down into like close group consensus in X4 space. Not even really understand on that, but. Is it good volume here? Uh, okay, so uh, something interesting about the is uh, Academia, um, K A D E M I and um, we're, we're loosely based on the uh, Academia. Um, so these are distributed hash tables, and these are tables uh, that index information across array of uh, hard drives uh, on the network. Uh, they're indexed with uh, exclusive board names. And um, so there's a lot to get into. There's the same? Definitely not. <laughs> it's super binary, one or zero, you have it or you don't. Um, and there's pros and cons to that. Like you say, yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Has you know it's like it's what you're looking for. If you want the total security, independence, freedom, you go for these types of things. Um, if you want the safety and reliability and feeling like you can call somebody and sort everything out, um, yeah, it's just you know healthy competition in the financial industry. Um, they, uh, I feel like we talked about some big things. I was hoping for some you know, other questions. Yeah, yeah. What's your role? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so I found out about them about three years ago, or maybe longer by now. Um, and I've just been making, you know, simple apps and JavaScript and things. And I started to make them for these guys. And it's pretty crazy that you can just write literally like maybe ten lines of code and have a decentralized, encrypted, totally secure, no backend app that can just work and do things. Um, so I stuck with them, and of course, for all these other reasons around here, I just feel like they're making something that is creating the kind of world that I want to be in. Um, so I stuck with them, and now we're doing outreach. We're still making apps, and I'm just kind of helping it along. Yeah, yeah. So we have a. Um, you can download just like any software. It works in any language. It has FFIs for every computer language. Um, there's so you can just download a piece of software, and it can be accessed in the safe network, and you don't even know it. Um, just like you download Skype, it runs through the regular internet. You download whatever safe so, Skype. So how many people are using apps So it's not completely live. We're still in the test network phase, um, but. We're going to be showing in a video a lot of these applications running. Um, we also have a browser, a special browser that goes straight to the safe network um, to make it easier for devs. And then you can just write JavaScript apps and like index.html, a few lines of JavaScript, and you have a safe network app. So yeah, we're going to show a video in a minute on that, that app working. Um, so yeah, just like any other software. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of our courses are here at Tennessee. Do we need to get Totally. Um, we've had, so on the last test network, um, we definitely had some programs written in C. Um, did you write any programs in C for safety? No, mostly rest. Yeah. So we're going to have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right now, the APIs that we've been working on that have made safe is released. JavaScript on the API and um, just FFI bindings. So there's a C FFI binding um, that you could just write software for and work on this. You have one? Uh, yeah, I was just wondering because you said this state network is for like countries that will that have governments like China who like pretty much sees everything on the internet, like blocks like YouTube and uh, Amazon and all those people. 
Um, what happens if they actually ban your network in, your, in their country? Would they, wouldn't that be the purpose of your um, whole thing about being a global network and safe? Right, right. The only way they could block something like this or another encrypted network is to completely ban encryption. Um, and if any country did that, um, like encryption exists for a reason, so that when you're accessing a server, they can't, nobody can just see your credit card information go by unencrypted. Um, so if the company bans encryption, that's, that's a bold move, and a lot of their citizens will start getting hacked. Um, so if something's well enough encrypted that all it looks like is, you know, encrypted traffic, then there's, it's super difficult. We've run a lot of tests, and it's worked in China. Um, but to completely ban encryption, would, it's never happened before, and it would make that country's citizens super vulnerable. Um, yeah. And that's definitely, yeah, a lot of countries it's like that, but... Um, completely ban. Yeah, it's possible, but it would really be shooting themselves in the foot, yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe someone else like that already. Yeah. Um, so, so how about <coughs> our current test network? So, MadeSafe put up about 100 nodes. They do that for every network, um, which is like 10 DigitalOcean or AWS servers split up a bunch. Um, so, 100 nodes, and then there's always around uh, three times that many like community nodes just people running it from their laptop. So it's not huge, but the speeds have still been decent. Um, but when there's like 13 billion nodes, it gets really fast, and data caching kicks in, and it could possibly be as fast or faster than a direct connection to a server. Um, potential to be much, much faster, because it's not lots of devices connected to one server. So, yeah. 24 hour uptime? Well, I mean, there's nodes around the entire planet, so every time zone, and a lot of people leave their computers on at night. And, um, if it's spread out sufficiently, there'll be computers to serve things. I mean, you've never had, even in the test networks where it's a super limited amount, you've never had downtime because there aren't enough nodes. Especially when they have the potential, potential to learn safe them. Yeah, I, I like this question. Um, so I was talking about Kadamia, um, which I think BitTorrent uses um, to organize um, so to organize clients, right? Uh, so what we're doing differently is that we're going to handle network churn. Uh, we're going to have some redundancy. Uh, so we'll copy, I don't know how many times, I don't know if that's been determined yet, but we'll copy data uh, across a certain number of nodes on the network. And uh, going back to these data chains, they're going to handle network churn um, so that when a node leaves its group, um, it's going to take care of bringing a new node in and making sure that all the signatures um, for the group are recognized so they can, these signatures can still be used to uh, verify transactions and sign the next uh, link in the data chain. Um, Which was pretty much is instead of like just SSL, 
itself. Right. So, so if it's just to a server or the WP that's put there, like the flips that do, then that's okay. But things like in the end, if there's no telegram or messaging apps, you can say Right. Don't you know, take the case that no normal person can be able to have a use for And And it's come up on the forums, you know, throughout the years, but. The big argument that I've seen from the discussions is that you can, you know, you can ban it Polit politically, possibly, possibly. No one's ever done it, but um, banning it technically, you know, just like is a whole other matter. And you know, like on a technical level, creating something that could. I mean, there've been when Bitcoin is coming along, there've been countries that tried to, you know, outlaw it or stop it, but. I mean, everybody has a computer, it's open source, it, you can't, um, technically, but, yeah, so, sometimes laws just come along, but. How long has that, I know in the UK, they have a law where you can have a The way we're doing it um, right now, and it sounds like it's pretty stable, is um, so you have like a around a 10 character, pretty much a username, and then a 10 character password. Um, and both of those together, retrieve your file and decrypt it locally. So, I mean, you can have an easy password, it's pretty easy to remember. Um, there's security issues, but then you won't forget it if you have to hand it over to somebody. So, it's not like remembering. Bitcoin key, which is like 30 characters, numbers, capital lowercase, it's like, it's a lot more manageable to keep track of than that. Um, is there anybody else have any questions? Yeah, yeah. So one of my you know, things I really like about this organization is the possibility of like flip my like I want to start making money all these different ways, like this is obviously like, like selling my hard drive essentially. discussions on that on the forum too. Um, the main takeaway I've gotten from those is that there's the team's planning ahead for that and they're writing algorithms to help counterbalance at least part of that. So after a certain amount of servers or a certain amount of hard drives, these kind of bell-shaped for the diminishing returns model. So, because um, that has been a huge problem with Bitcoin, it's led to super centralized nodes. Um, so, as far as I know, the team's doing the best they can trying to make counterbalances. But it's definitely on their minds, yeah. I think I think the way it would work is for you, like you know, stack your uh, your hard drives at home. Yeah, I think it'd be more yeah, right. to make more money. Right. I think it's it's really going to be um, be meaning to prevent huge data centers um, from you know hogging it. That's right. That's totally. Thank you. The ten hard drives would be better than one. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, on the other foot, on the other hand, it'd be interesting um, to work with Amazon, to work with Google, to, you know, okay, where they can be. To, 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 to license our, 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 our